Our brethren, let us stand for our prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you bless your children this evening to be able to come before your holy presence, to listen to your holy words, your words that will lead us in the righteous path so that we may be able to gain that salvation that you promise unto your children. We pray, our Father, that you would always be by our side, protecting us from the many evils that surround us in this world, so that we may be able to continue on fulfilling our duties and serving the most holy name. Open up our hearts and our minds as we listen to your holy words this evening, that we may be able to understand your truth. And Father, we will be able to live by your truth so that we may be able to go on fulfilling our obligations before the most holy sign. Bless our brother that will teach your words, guide him with your Holy Spirit, that he may be able to teach your words with clarity so that all of us will be benefited in our services unto thee. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we call on you, asking your Lord to continue to take our prayers to the Father. Asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and the Father until the end of our lives. Our Father in heaven, we return to you in prayer. Asking your Father to look in on all of our brethren that may be ill this evening. And Father, we know that you know who the oppressors are. You know who the persecutors are. You know those, our Father, that are having, looking for our brethren that are in hiding. And you know the judges and the lawyers that are preventing our brother from being able to free himself from jail. We ask your Father to throw your loving arms around our brethren and guide them and protect them. Give them the patience and understanding that they need, that they will wait on you to rescue them. So then, Father, together, one day we will all be together, fulfilling our duties and serving the most holy name. We truly believe this evening that you've heard our prayer, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed, because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, pleasant day. An evening to each and every one of us. The years that pass by uh, from the time that even Brother Iranya G. Manalo has passed away, we've noticed that um, there are so many things that have, have happened to the church in these last days. What others couldn't understand even those people who are in the institution, uh, they say, why is it that you didn't follow to submit yourself to the administrations, the administration that followed after the death of Brother Iranyo G. Manalo? Weren't we taught that that is something that we should always do is to submit to the administration as taught by the messenger? and also by Brother Iranyo G. Manalo, and is still upheld by the institution in these times. Why is it that there are some, despite of this command, that we were not all able to submit? For what reason is why we didn't submit? Is it because we just wanted it our ways? Let's ask the Bible. In Hebrew, the chapters 13, 17 through 22, this is recorded. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief for that would be unprofitable for you. That is clear to us. That has been taught to us, brothers and sisters. But 
we know when is it but proper to submit to an administration. Let's continue this time to read 18. Pray for us, for we are all confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I appeal to you, brethren, bear with the word of exhortation, for I have written to you in few words. So this exhortation does not only, only remain on Hebrew 13, 17, but it all goes all the way to 21. What is this exhortation all about? That those that we submit to must live honorably before the sight of God and also making sure that they can plead every good work to do his will. Remember, good work, not bad work, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. So we know that what is right before the sight of God, if an administration is there to lead us in the proper way, living honorably, then it is only by right to submit ourselves to them as an exhortation that came from Apostle Paul. We know this has been done during the time of the messenger of God in this last days. Brother Felix Manalo, and even during the time of Brother Iranio G. Manalo, beloved brethren, why is it that we couldn't submit ourselves to an administration that followed after our Brother Iranio G. Manalo? What made them live in a dishonorable way? Which is the reason why our conscience could not say that we should follow something that is wrong. Let's read the prophecy, Isaiah 1, 4, 8 through 10, 17, 21, 23, 24, and 28. This is not new to us, but it's, but it's best for us to really know why we had to stand up and firmly in our faith. A lost sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. So the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God. You people of Gomorrah, learn to do good. Remember, one of the exhortation of the Apostle Paul that we should do is to do the good things, the good works, as what we have read. And also, it makes mention here to the leaders of the church in this last days that they should learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor. It did not say defend the oppressor. It did not say become one with the oppressor. No, rebuke the oppress oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. So uh, let's continue reading in 21. This is recorded, beloved brethren, how the faithful city has become a harlot it was full of justice, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Your princes are rebellious. 
and companions of thieves. Do you remember, beloved brethren, uh, of uh, one of the wanted people in Korea was a thief, a thief, and he was in companion with JS in building the arena. That has been fulfilled. Everyone loved bribes. Do you remember that there was a time that there were four ministers, top minister, Brother Benefrido Santiago, Brother Radel Cortez. Who else? Who is the Matt, Brother Matt Pare, Pareja? Pereja? Pereja? No, pe, Pareja, I mean, Pareja. And then there's another one, Radel, Radel Cabrera. Were they not amongst those who took a bribe for the vote for the unity of the church and exchange it to bribe money? And because of that, they got expelled. The, what else does the Bible makes mention? Beloved brethren, everyone loves bribe and follow after rewards. How many, how many Guinness book of record did J.S. and his companions show in proving that they had the awards of the Guinness Book of Records? Has this been fulfilled? Because they are saying that it is not meant for the church in these last days. They do not defend the fatherless. You have seen what they have done to the fleet family of the executive minister and to all the other ministers who stood grounds in their faith in upholding what is right and also to the other members and also officers. Were they not expelled? But they were expelled only from the synagogues because they could not expel them from the church. Why? Because it was unjustly done. Brother, brother, brothers and sisters, they're expelled from the synagogue, John 16, 1 and 2. Nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Let's proceed. Therefore, the Lord says, what do you think God feels towards these oppressors? Oppressors, these leaders of God's people, the church of Christ in this last days. It's being oppressed by these leaders. The members are being oppressed. They are being said that they are to follow this or not. You will also be expelled. They're being threatened, right? If you're not one with the leaders or those of the administration in these last days. That's a proof that if you have the pin, the right hand to the forehead. No, only the right hand because it's only partial apostasy. That's why only the right hand, right? Let's continue. The Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, I will rid myself of my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies. So if you will be united with an administration that oppresses people, especially God's people, do you know who your enemy will be? God will be your enemy. So what is it that God will do for his enemies? Those who stood grounds in uniting themselves with an administration that oppresses God's people. The destruction of transgressors and of sinners shall be together and those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed. These are not my words. You know, there's an article that they made and say, who are you to have the right to preach? You're expelled. You don't, you don't have the Holy Spirit. So who uh, in the right man will say that you have the right to proclaim God's words? And they say, if we are truly uh, making known that the church of Christ is the one for salvation, then why is it that you're outside the church, they say? Why is it that you abandon the church? Why is it that you cause division, they said? Brothers and sisters, they said that we deviated from the teachings that the messenger has preached about and Brother Iranyaji Manalo has preached about. Why is it that we are so sure that we did not deviate? Because First of all, Brother Felix Manalo and Brother Iranyaji Manalo thought about brotherhood. Love your brothers and your sisters. Honor your father and your mother. He also, uh, they also taught that we should love our enemies. 
was this being fulfilled with the one that is leading uh, the administration that took after Brother Iranio G. Manalo? No, there were many other things that they have done. They placed some of the family of members of the late executive minister and other brethren in jail. There were those who were uh, just cast away. The family of the, the sister Lottie, uh, sister Tenny, brother Mark and his, his family, and so many other brethren as well because of them striving to protect what is right, beloved brothers and sisters. Why is it that it is not wrong to say that this is a fulfillment of a prophecy in these last days? We have to understand, beloved brothers and sisters, why that is not wrong to say as a fulfillment of the prophecy in these last days. Because even, even when we were studying in the ministry, you see this? Ministerial... At doctrina, ikala limang taon. Five, uh, this is the fifth year. If we read here, uh, why, bakit may mga hula sa aklat ni Isaias na waring tumutukoy sa Israel nung una, ngunit katuparan ay sa panahong Kristiyano? Why are there uh, prophecies in the book of Isaiah as referring to the nation of Israel, but the fulfillment is in the time of the Christian era. Let's read here the answer of Christian workers commentary on the whole Bible, page 312. Christian worker commentary of the whole Bible, page 312. The mission of written prophecy Written prophecy, therefore, had a twofold mission, one for the immediate present and the other, the remote future. Who was the immediate present that was taught by even the messenger? That's the first church of Christ in the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. But why is it not wrong to say that this is also a fulfillment in these last days about what is going on in the church? Because the, what we have read as one for the remote future. When was this remote future? When did it take place? It took place in our time. Beloved brethren, we know last year of March, one of their top debater, Brother Bularan, he was laid to rest also. And not even a year or a year after that or a year and a month after that, J.S., Brother Glacerio Santos, also have been put to rest. Who's next? Who do you think want to be next? Would you want to volunteer? No, of course. Shouldn't this already uh, boggle the minds of our fellow ministers? Fellow, uh, mi uh, fellow officers, fellow ministers in the district level, also in the administrative level. I think last month, even Brother Rod L. Bruno also was laid to rest. Everyone has their own time. But as it is appointed for a man to die once, but after this, judgment, Hebrew 9.27. So we cannot say that one who has laid to rest has already truly made known to his God that he is really saved, unless that he fits the criteria of truly defending God's people, those people who are supposed to be entrusted under the care of those people who should love them and care for them as our Lord Jesus Christ did. He gave his life for the church. And if it need be, we must do so for our brethren. John 13, 34 to 35, Ephesians 5, 25. Now, say, say that those who were able to accumulate wealth 
abusing their power, being in the administrative level. They have uh, received bribe money. See, none of the rich, okay? Oh, they have all the, everything else. Are they happy? Now, say you have uh, uh, so many properties that you have accumulated. You have so many restaurants, Jollibee, or you have uh, other restaurants uh, under the name, your name, and say all the other assets of the church are under your name and your family's name. Beloved brothers and sisters, you think that an individual will be able to bring this to his grave, but before we may even ask all these things, if you will consult the internet, look what it says there. What does it say there? These are top 10 richest and most powerful leaders in the Philippines. Could you imagine that? Who's number one? Brother JS. He beats Brother Eduardo, look. On Brother Eduardo is only number four. Look, one, two, three, four, five, or fifth. I don't know, but uh, we can see here that really, um, uh, could you imagine? Do you know how much I used to receive as a minister every week uh, as a being a minister? Uh, I won't mention it anymore, but sure, it won't make me one of the top richest in the Philippines, maybe one of the top poorest in the Philippines. But the thing is this, how could you be so rich when you only have this much that is supposed to be given to you? Maybe there is a reason behind this. If we consult the Rappler, uh, let's read the Rappler. What are some of the things that we should know? Why? Uh, JS seems to be so rich. Look, Santos family entrenchment in various Iglesia de Cristo corporation and foundations. These are not my uh, uh, making. These comes from Rappler. Listen to, uh, look, Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ Corporation, Board of Minister and General Auditor, uh, and then Board Member and Legal Head. Who do you see there? Glicerio Santos Jr., Glicerio Santos the fourth. That's one. That's a whole church, beloved brethren. Let's go to the FYM Foundation. Well, uh, you could see, you'll read it for yourself. Glicerio Santos Jr., Glicerio Santos the third, Glicerio the Santos the fourth. It's all under their name. Could you imagine? Most of, or practically every property of the church is listed under their name. Let's continue. How about Maligaya Development Corporation? Glacerio Santos the fourth incorporator and stockholder. Wow. Could I apply for stock? I remember I can't do that because I'm poor. Uh, maybe if I get rich someday, right? Let's let's uh, go. How about Subic Bay, Felix Y Manalo Foundation, uh, incorporator board member and president? Glacerio Santos Jr. Incorporator and board member, Glicerio Santos III. Incorporated board member and legal officer, Glicerio Santos IV. It's all family members. Let's continue. FYM Medical Foundation. Glicerio Santos Jr., board member and CEO. Glicerio Santos III, board member and OTR officer. Glicerio Santos IV, board member and legal officer. Wow. How about for the wife? Is there anything for the wife? Un, uh, unified Livelihood and Advocacy for Development. UNLAD International INC, Anita Santos Incorporator, board member and president. How about the New Era University? Glicerio Santos Jr., board member and chief executive finance officer. Iranio Medical Center INC, Glicerio Santos Jr., board member and president. Glicerio Santos III, board member and what's that? COV, COVID officer? What's that? 
Well, if it's COV, I don't know if it's Spanish. This is, all I know is COVID, but that's not it. But it just says COVID officer. I don't want to be an officer of that, whatever that is. It might kill me. Glicerio Santos, the fourth uh, board member and legal officer, right? So um, these are but some of the things that you could find in the internet that is being uh, said. That's probably the reason why that he was made the richest pastor, powerful pastor in the Philippines. But if this is all done because of oppression or oppressing mankind, beloved brethren, do you think that if you have gained all this wealth, when the time is about to come that you have to leave this world, do you think that you could bring your beautiful cars, restaurants, and other things that may be in your possessions? Let's read here in the Bible. In Psalms 49, 6 through 14, and 17 and 20. Let's read. By evil people who trust in their riches and boast of their great wealth, we can never redeem ourselves. We cannot pay God the price for our lives because the payment for a human life is too great. What we could pay would never be enough to keep us from the grave, to let us live forever. Anyone can see that even the wise die as well as the foolish and stupid. The, they all leave the riches to their descendants. Their graves are their homes forever. There they stay for all time. Though they once had lands of their own, our greatness cannot keep us from death. We will still die like the animals. See what happened to those who trust in themselves. The faith of those who are satisfied with their wealth. They are doomed to die like sheep. And death will be their shepherd. The righteous will triumph over them as their bodies quickly decay in the world of the dead far from their homes. He cannot take it with him when he dies. His wealth will not go with him to the grave. Our greatness cannot keep us from death. We will still die like the animals. What is this that one should always understand before he may start to invest in this life, even if it has to come in a wicked way? He will also die like the animal, like what the Bible says, because as the animal dies, a, a rich may die, poor may die, a smart will die, everyone, even, even the handsome will die, right? Even the ugly, the more they should die. No, everyone dies. Brothers and sisters, whatever status is in this life, everyone dies. But the question is this, when you die, are you in the right time to die on the day of judgment, when you face your maker, brothers and sisters, would an individual be able to say that he is able to accumulate all his wealth? And so on judgment day, he can uh, pay for his salvation. We know that it's not true. Later, we'll get to that, beloved brethren. So what does God have to say about those who are boastful? Because the reason why others have fallen into uh, trusting in their wealth, when in fact, if you read your, read your dollar bill, whether that's a hundred dollar bill or a one dollar bill, it says there, in God we trust, correct? Yes, that's whom we should trust at all times, even if God has made you rich, if God really made you rich, because there is some kind of wealth that did not come from God, it comes from the wrong way, and that's why. It is not God who made that individual uh, who is evil rich. The Bible says in our Lord Jesus Christ says, you may gain the whole world, but if you lose your life, you gain nothing. So what is the feeling of others? 
thinking that they are in power, thinking that they have everything. And that's the reason why they are able to trample over the decisions or over those who are poor, fatherless, or those who are considered weak. Let's read Ezekiel 28, 1 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods in the midst of the sea, yet you are a man and not a God. Now you set your heart as a heart of a God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdoms in trade, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your spirit. Splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of a slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still say before him who slays you, I am a God? But you shall be a man and not a God in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. That's God who spoke that. So don't look at me when you are I uh, read what is written in the Bible. But brothers and sisters, could you imagine the death of those who trust in themselves, those who trust in their wealth, those who think that they are so wise, even probably wiser than Daniel. We know Daniel is very wise, right? He could interpret dreams and everything. But if you're this person here is wiser than Daniel, but look, where did he become a fool in trying to think that he is God already? So if there are those who are tempted to make decisions or doctrines that says that they have to be obeyed and followed because they're the leaders, brothers and sisters, you will always have to always consider the laws and teachings of our God before you may even execute the teachings that should be followed by our brothers and sisters. So what is this? That if God doesn't want us to be boastful, what else is it that God hates to see among those who may might try to say that they are people of God? 61.8 of Isaiah, I read. The Lord says, I love justice. I hate oppression and crime. I will faithfully reward my people and make an eternal covenant with them. What is this that God do love so much? Justice. Remember, take side with God. He loves justice. What is it that he hate? Oppression and crime. Stop oppressing. Stop doing criminal acts. What are some criminal acts that people do in this world? Kill, murder. What else do people rob? People, what else do other people do as criminal acts? Sell drugs. You know, have you heard of that doctor in Texas? He's a OE. I think his name is Brother. Uh, what's his name? Capistrano, there. Cesar Mark Capistrano. But through means of him being a doctor, he abused that power that is given to him. Search him up later. He's now behind bars. He's uh, put in jail because of providing some kind of uh, receta. What's receta in English? Prescriptions. So that others will be able to take these to the street and sell them and they take them. And according to that article, he will spend 100 years in jail. Do you know that, uh, that Cesar Mark Capistrano is one of those 
who oppressed uh, Brother Mark and his family and the family of the late executive minister, but he's behind bars now because of something that he has done wrong. Not because like Brother Angel, he has done something what is right, which is to try to defend. But those who are unjust, those who oppress, they put him in jail. But the Lord says, I love justice and I hate oppression and crime. So you better watch out. You better not cry. You know, it's coming in town. God is going to come to haunt those people, really, if they don't change. Now, what about if they, are, if they come to their death? What kind of burial will they, you think that they will have? Let's read. Um, I say a 1420. You will not be given a proper burial. For you have destroyed your nation and slaughtered your people. The descendants, the descendants of such an evil person will never again receive honor. Remember, if you're involved in oppression or if you're involved amongst those who have been placed or put in jail, if you're involved in any kind of crime that is uh, that you're not even supposed to be, uh, brothers and sisters, you heard that they will not have a proper burial. You know, uh, in the state, I think if a person uh, dies through means of COVID, they burn them. Is that true? They, till they become ashes? They cremate them. But others, uh, we don't know, in other countries, in Brazil, um, they, uh, they have a lot of, um, what do you call that? Gravesite. They just throw them there because there's so many people dying because of this. Beloved brothers and sisters, beloved officers and ministers, you may be able to hide the wrongdoings before the sight of a man, but you could never hide before God because God knows all things. First John 3.20. Where do you stand on the day of judgment? Among those who defend God's people or among those who will oppress God's people? You are in danger of receiving the punishment, brothers and sisters, if you don't take side with God. If I were you, I would take side with God. Because if you are against God, no matter how rich you are, no matter how you have gained honor and wisdom in this world, there will be a time that you will die but after this is the judgment are you able to face the judgment seat of christ on the day of judgment and say i am a true minister of god i defended the faith of those whom you have entrusted under my care i gave everything for the sake of your people are you able to stand with firmness and conviction and say that you are in the sight of God on that day, brothers and sisters, let it be that all of us, especially those who have led God's people be among those who will be considered to receive what they have toiled for and worked for, for the sake of the Lord almighty God. What is God's decision? We already read that a while ago that they will not have proper burial. What else is God going to do to those who destroyed God's people or oppressed God's people? Nahum 3, 1, and 5. Let's read. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. Its victims never departs. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdom your shame. So what is it that God will do to a nation that is involved in crime, that is involved in doing oppression toward God's people? God himself says, I will lift your skirt over your face. I will show the nation your nakedness and the kingdom your shame. It's not the church seeming to be that way. They say you are the ones, you're the ones that is making the church be put to shame, Brother Randy and all the other defenders and ministers. No, if 
you did not do the things that oppresses God's people, if you have stood in the sight of God's righteousness, you will not be put to shame because it is God who will uphold us. It's through the righteousness of God that when we obey, we are upheld by God as he upheld the messenger in this last days. Brothers and sisters, Isaiah 41, 9 through 10. But whenever you deviate from the righteousness of God for, for his words, then expect that you would not be among those who would receive respect and honor, but you'll be disgraced. Could you imagine a church has reached over a hundred years? And when it reached there, brothers and sisters, is a time that so many things have already been uh, being seen that gives shame to it. How poor is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was already nailed on the cross. He was already crucified on the cross for us. Why can we not fight for what is right and no longer disgrace the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the sake of God's righteousness, for the sake of God's people, for the sake of the work of the messenger of God and the work of Brother Eraja G. Manalo. Brothers and sisters, we still could do something about it. Now, was there a person in the Bible who was a tyrant? He was a king. He did everything he wanted to do. He kills everyone he wants to kill. He makes the laws. He makes everything. But what did God do to him so that he would change? Let's read Daniel 5, 19 to 21. The great, uh, let's skip that verse. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. So this is a king. He, 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 he is able. He's that powerful. Let's not imitate this kind of king, this King Nebuchadnezzar. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of man. His heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God rules in the kingdom of man and appoints over it whomever he chooses. Let's proceed reading. Go ahead. Let this heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of the heaven and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of man and gives it to whomever he chooses. Let's proceed. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar and the end of the 12 months he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke saying, it is not this great, is this not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? So don't think, brothers and sisters, when you were handed to an our responsibility that you have built this and take the honor to yourself and say, oh, all this, all this have I acquired. Brothers and sisters, you know, the church started uh, in, our, in this last days from the time of Brother Felix Manalo and Brother Iranya G. Manalo and all that they have said that they should allow not the church to borrow any money from anyone, right? But those who led in this last days, they did not take heed to that. And that's the reason why they have fallen away from what was supposed to be done for the church in this last days. Because their heart was lifted up, thinking that they could do everything that they want, like King Nebuchadnezzar. But let's continue to read. A voice fell from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar. 
to you it is spoken the kingdom has departed from you and they shall drive you from men and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make you eat grass like oxen and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses that very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from man and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagles, feathers, and his nails like bird claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. And I bless the Most High and praise and honor him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him what have you done at the same time my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and splendor returned to me my counselors and nobles resorted to me i was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me now i nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven all of whose works are truth and his ways justice and those who walk in pride is able to put down so brothers and sisters that's a pretty long ver verses right but yet could you relay if the present administration could only reflect of losing so many of the hierarchy when god interfered and fulfilled all those prophecies of whatever happened in our time remember god is still giving you the opportunity to return so that you would humble yourself we will all humble ourselves and go back and always giving the glory and praise to our god not to exalt ourselves for god does not want people who are boastful he puts them down he puts down the proud but he uplifts those who are humble brothers and sisters how do we know about that beloved brethren what other acts is it that we should keep away from that shows that uh, this is an oppression toward God's people? Let's read Isaiah 10, 1 through 4. Woe to those who decree unrighteousness decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed to rob the needy of the justice and to take what is right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless what will you do in the day of punishment and in the desolation which will come from afar to whom will you flee for help and where will you leave your glory without me they shall bow down among the prisoners and they shall fall among the slain for all his anger for all this anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Let's continue to read. Woe, the next, uh, you are doomed. You make unjust laws and oppress my people. That is how you keep the poor from having the rights and from getting justice. That is how you take the property that belongs to widows and orphans. What will you do when God punishes you? What will you do when he brings disaster on you from a distant country? Where will you run to find help? Where will you hide your wealth? You will be killed in battle or drag off as prisoners yet even so the lord's anger will not be ended his hand will still be stretched out to punish that's how god feels towards those who like to do crime lies oppression brothers and sisters god wants us to be living in a justified life or in just way of life he will not permit those who continue to oppress to remain as god's people 
So what is it that we could learn from King Nebuchadnezzar? After he was able to do anything he wanted, he could kill anyone, he could uplift anyone, he, he acted as if he was God. He made his laws, the same one if there are people out there who are making their own teachings and laws, you shouldn't do that anymore because you should always keep the laws of God. Why? Are you going to wait for your family members or your close relatives or your close peers to be the next one that God will involve his hands on till you will realize that there's a mission that you have to accomplish? Brother Eduardo Manado, lead God's people the right way and may justice prevail for the sake of God's people in these last days. So we will all be saved. You're still given the opportunity. Why? What is the way for us to show that we are really willing to change for the better? James 4, 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. First thing that we should do is we should humble ourselves before the sight of the Lord Almighty God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect example that we should follow his footstep. First Peter 2, 21 to 22. He humbled himself. He became obedient until death. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. As a member of his church, we should follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not anyone, even if they're administrators or belong to the administration. But if they don't follow the head of the church that belongs to God. Because the Bible says you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. 1 Corinthians 3.23 TEV. Brothers and sisters, if we want to belong to Christ, if we belong, belong to God, then we should do what is right, what is good before the sight of God. And if we are in that point that we're still uh, having problems, even after we have changed for the sake of Preparing God's people for its salvation, preparing ourselves for the salvation that is drawing near. What should we do if we could not do it on our own? First Peter 5, 6, and 7. Let's read. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. What is it that God would want us to do? Humble ourselves and cast all our cares to God. What are your cares for the sake of the church? Beloved brothers and sisters, fellow ministers, remember when we swore and took an oath that we will defend the church. Let us defend it in the way that God wants, in the way our Lord Jesus Christ wants so that we can prepare it for salvation. So many things have gone, done, uh, has been done in the past. But what is God's final call? So that we and those within the institution, even all the ministers and officers and all members will have also the kind of salvation that they should receive also on the day of judgment. Ezekiel. 33, 11, 14 to 16. Then he said, here, 33, 11. Tell them that as surely as I, the sovereign Lord, am the living God, I do not enjoy seeing sinners die. I would rather see them stop sinning and live. Israel, Stop the evil you are doing. Why do you want to die? I may warn someone evil that he is going to die. But if he stops sinning and does what is right and good, for example, if he returns the security he took for a loan or gives back what he stole, if he stops sinning and follows the laws that give life, he will not die, but live. I will forgive the sins 
He has committed and he will live because he has done what is right and good. This is God speaking. The officers, the ministers, the administrative level, all of us. Does God give us the opportunity? Yes. We know ourselves. We know what is right. But why would you want to die, fellow ministers? Why would you want the brethren to die? Do what is good. Stop doing what is wrong. Stop oppressing. Stop stealing. Do what is right. And that way, we will live. We'll be saved. That's the essence of God's call. We're not here to try to try to just attack our fellow brethren and fellow ministers within the church. No. What we are attacking is the wrongdoings. We're not attacking you as a fellow brother or a sister. We are here because we love you. And we don't want any one of us to be separated. And most of all, we don't want to be among those whom God will consume on the day of judgment because we did not change, because we did not do what is right. Mga mahal na kapatid, allow me to speak in Tagalog. Sana nakita niyo po ang lahat ng mga pangyayari. Marami ang gustong ipakita ng Diyos na pagpapahinuhod para sa kanyang bayan. Ayaw niyang sino man sa atin ang mamatay. Gusto niya na tayong lahat ay mabuhay. Gusto niya tayong iwan na natin ang kasamaan, ang lahat ng pangaapi, ang pagnanakaw, ang lahat ng nakasisira sa ating kaligtasan. Alalahanin natin ang lahat ng ginugol na panahon ng sugo, sakripisyo niya para sa bayan ng Diyos at maging ang kapatid na Iran yung manalo. Marahil sa pagnyayari na nangyari na ngayon sa ating mga panahon, kitang-kita natin kung paano gumalaw ang kamay ng Diyos. Sana ang mga nalalabing panahon ng ating buhay, mga kapwa ministro, ay ibigay na natin para sa Diyos. Bakit gusto mong mamatay? Sabi ng Biblia. Gawin mo yung tama para ikaw ay mabuhay. Alam naman natin ang tama. We know what is right. We know what is wrong. Brothers and sisters, we hope that everything is clear. We are here not to all the more divide. No, we're not dividing the church. We are teaching from what God wants. Which side you're going to take side with on the side of God or on the side of the enemy of God who just wants to deceive you and bring you to his destruction on the day of judgment and not be among those who will be saved. This is our lesson. Please stand and we'll pray. Our Father in heaven, we once again thank you so very much for helping us to understand clearly your words and teachings that would always edify and correct us in our everyday life. Oh Lord, we know that these are your guidance for your people as whenever we follow them, we are always secured. And we know that at the end of all things, even if we have to rest in the grave, we bring with us with assurance that we have finished our race. We have fought the good fight. We want that on the day of judgment that we'll be among those who will be able to enter your kingdom. Oh, Father, we have suffered so much. So you can see how others should stood their grounds in striving to obey you. They'd rather be able to suffer for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ and give their freedom away for the sake of the for the sake of the of the church in this last days there are those who were cast away and placed in jail there are those who were hunted down oh father you know what we have gone through and all this had to be fulfilled because it's written and it must be done but oh god we're weak by ourselves we are so small in number but we can see your hand and how it works in trying to defend your people. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. They say that we don't have your spirit. That is not true. It is a fact that you are with us. And we experience and feel you. It shows that you are with us. Which is now.
your people who have been oppressed. Visit now your people who are in dire need of help. And those who may be sick, kindly cure them from their ailments, that their life and strength may be used in giving glory and praise to your most holy name. Dear Father in heaven, we do believe that you will bless each and every one of us. You will forgive us for all the sins we have committed. You will allow that those who are leading the institution to have a change of heart. All the officers and ministers, may they reflect upon their ways to do what you want. Because it is what you want that would save us on the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, help us to be obedient like you. And please bless us in our livelihood as well. We ask that you pray to our Father on our behalf that we may receive the things we ask for. Father, we ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you once again, beloved brethren, and in joining us in our Bible study for today. This concludes our Bible study. Have a nice day, Paul. Bye-bye.